Many thanks to my fine tool partners and new and old patrons. You guys are awesome. Couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much. So my first informal video begins. Let's see how you like it. I'm gonna do something a little different and just to give you some extra content because like I said, SketchUp videos really aren't doing that great anymore. So what I'm gonna do is kind of these like vlog style videos that gives you more content of the kind of woodworking that I'm doing at the time that I may not be able to film because if, if I was to film everything that I did for clients, it would get real monotonous because I've got like 12 barn doors that I'm trying to do and I can't do a video on every single one just for the sake of content, okay? I want to give you guys some quality, but also some quantity. Um, so right now, I mean, I've already done a video on how to make, you know, my tornado bird houses, but I'm working on one for a client. So I figured I would show you guys what I'm doing just kind of in an informal way uh, to give you something else to uh, watch during the week. Uh, so maybe you guys can have more than one video per week. But anyway, I'm doing um, my tornado bird houses. Let me see if I can get you in there. Uh, so what I've got here is the top ring and I'm going to alternate the grain directions to make sure that the wood movement is uh, kept down to a minimum. So uh, I've got grain direction running this way for the top. Then I'm going to set this ring down going that way and then so on and so forth for every single layer all the way down to these you know little two inch guys right here. So before I attach these three rings to the top itself, I have to cut a slot for the actual opening of the birdhouse and you can make that slot just about any different, you know, any size that you want for the different birds that may or may not go in here. Um, I offset the front back a lot more than I do the rear. Um, so if I turn it around here, you can kind of see that the overlap, you know, the overhang rather is really, really minimal. Um, but the front is actually going to have a step back look to it. <clears throat> so I'm going to attach these three rings together first and then run them to the bandsaw to make the opening. I'm gonna use a nailer to help me out, but I'm going to use 5 8 inch pin nails or uh, brad nails because these are a little less than a half inch thick for each layer. I really need to get a different fitting for my nail gun because see you here? <laughs> it like constantly leaks because it's the wrong uh, wrong male end for the female end, so it doesn't fit very good. I need to get a new one. One of these rings are um, about an inch different in size. So like this is 10, this is nine, this is eight, this one's seven. These are three sixes, then I've got two fives, uh, three fours, three threes, and three twos. Uh, so they just kind of downgrade themselves each, almost each layer you make. Um, what I first do is I lay the piece where I like it, and then just hold it in place, and I give myself a border to stick to, and it'll help me place it back on whenever I'm ready. But that also tells me where I need to put glue. I'm gonna throw on a little glue here. Try and get it all the way around if I possibly can. Then make sure the grain orientation is correct. Set it down right on that pencil line. And then I'll just pop a few nails in the areas that I know I'm gonna have enough room. So like one right here, one over here. I got plenty of room back here. I don't have a lot of room right here because it's a really tiny, tiny edge, but the glue uh, should harden enough. Plus I'm also going to be cutting a hole right here, so I'm not worried about it. I can add maybe one over here and right here. Here we go. And I usually just check just to make sure <coughs> that I didn't go like that. So that looks good. So now onto the next layer. All right, now before I take this set of rings to the bandsaw, I can go ahead and continue with my ring placement and get my outlines made with my pencil. So I'm going to start pushing these rings over this way and back instead of bringing them straight back. So that way I can start making the curvature of the tornado. 
and I'll make my lines on this ring, but I won't attach it just yet. And then I'll take my next ring. Now this one I will attach. And I make these the same size so I can actually shift them more than these three here, which are three different sizes. But if you make a few rings that are the same size, you'll have more room to shift uh, your pieces over some more. Now you are going to have less glue surface area and keep your glue. Actually, it does increase the glue surface area. I'm sorry. Um, but it, it puts it in a different place. So you just kind of have to make sure you draw your lines correctly. And double check to make sure that your grain directions are also running opposite of one another. Let's see. I'm trying to get this right at the edge. Again. Right at the edge on the interior. Up on there. In there. And double check your work. That looks good. No, no, just keep now, going. inevitably, there's something that I always forget when I go to make these, and what I should have done was make a six inch ring, or excuse me, a six inch disc, which matches the rings. So that way it covers up the entire disc or ring that I have here so I can maneuver it. And I didn't do that this time. So what I'm gonna have to do is just basically center this portion right over the ring and um, make my outline. This one will not get attached with glue. Uh, it's actually going to be screwed in a couple of places, and then this one I am going to shift over, and uh, I'll have two screws here, and then one back here, because this one is going to start right there. So I've got to be able to have access to all of the screws and not cover them up to this guy. So I pretty much have to lay this one in place um, so I know where my screws need to go. Now, before I attach these screws, and I'm gonna color code them, and you'll see what I mean here in a second, but I've got them marked where I'm going to pre-drill a hole, and I'm not gonna quite use an eighth inch. I'm gonna use this 764, uh, which will give me enough meat to have some threads go into the wood. Um, but I am gonna color code these. The reason why is because these two right here are only going through this half inch thick material into the next layer. However, this one is going in through two layers. So I need to make sure that the customer knows that this particular one uh, is a longer screw and goes through two different layers instead of that one. So I've got some Power Pro screws here. Um, these are an inch and a quarter with a number six head. So the head's a little bit smaller, but it will still hold just fine. All right, so I just gotta hold them down Good, and I'm probably gonna go in at an angle to make sure that I don't go through that piece in the wrong spot. Excellent, I got plenty of meat, so I'm real happy with that. I just have to make sure that I don't split this uh, disc out when I go to drive the screws in, so I might need to countersink a little bit. Also, good news, I found some uh, inch and a quarter number eights, so now all the heads will match. Yay! So I got my countersink bit on here. So I'm just going to widen this hole a little bit on the top. So that will ensure that when the head goes down, it won't split that wood. Bam. Okay, so that attaches the bottom half to the discs. So that way they can take this section off and clean out the birdhouse. So now let's take this piece, alternate the grain pattern, of course. Now, there's tons of glue surface area on this. Take your ice pick out. Run it in. Okay. And with that down, sink you a couple nails in. All right, now that is fully attached. All the screws are in good. So now I can just take my next set of layers and arrange them in a tornado fashion, just making sure that I have access to all my screws.
So there is the removable base minus the three rings that I've got to attach to this after I cut the uh, cutout for the hole. So I'll put this aside for the moment and let's fire up the bandsaw. So because this is round, it's gonna be really difficult to push it in nice and straight. So I'm giving myself a uh, guide that I can just use to eyeball. All right, so there we go. Opening's cut. Just do a little bit of sanding to kind of clean it up and get it attached. All right, so the method is the same. We're gonna offset the grain direction and I'm gonna push it forward just a little bit to where there's a little overhang back here, but quite a bit up here. And use my pencil, wherever it went. <laughs> oh, oh, here it is. <laughs> That's so funny. You spend half your time looking for the crack you just had in your hand five minutes ago. <sighs> okay, now we're gonna run a couple more nails in. Now, that's the reason why I set these forward on the back side, so I have room to sink a nail uh, on that last ring to go into the top. Now, I'm gonna take the pieces apart here. Like that. Make sure the grain alternates so it's running the right direction. And we're gonna attach the rings now to these rings. So there we go. With the bottom now attached, we have a pretty cool tornado birdhouse. Now, we need to attach some little eye hooks here in the top. Um, now this is your choice. I, I usually do three and just make a little triangle uh, key ring here at the top that a rope or another chain can attach to. The reason I do three, it's a little easier to adjust because whenever you hang this, it may want to tilt. So you can adjust uh, the back. I usually put two in the front and one in the back. And uh, you can adjust that one here in the rear, a link or two to level it back out. All right, um, so I can take these now and attach them to the birdhouse. All right, so here's a little tip. I went to the key area of Home Depot and you can buy just the key rings themselves, but they're only like five to a pack and they're not exactly cheap. Um, so I went to Walmart and purchased this uh, package of little tags, like paper tags with this aluminum ring on it. And you can get, I would probably guesstimate there's about 20 in here, maybe 25. And uh, each one of them has a little key ring on it. And it was very cheap. I think it was like five bucks for that whole pack. So there's a little tip for me to you if you need to get some key rings, buy the little tags instead of just the rings themselves. It's a lot cheaper. So this is the front as you can see, and it does look like that it's pitched back so let's take about a link let's take a link out and see how it hangs all right so i ended up taking out um three links total and it hangs just a little back but that also helps the bird be able to get into the hole but as long as it's not hanging like this you know you should be fine all right so here is the one that i have in my backyard right now this one's made out of eastern red cedar so it has a little bit of a darker color um, but you can see it tilts back slightly just to allow the bird a little easier access. And you can kind of see that I've had some residents <laughs> in the past. So at the end of this season, all I have to do is take out these screws right here and that one right there. And the whole bottom drops out and I can clean it out. Nothing but just plain and simple food grade mineral oil. 
<clears throat> so I always make sure to get the inside dipped. Make sure to get a lot of oil on, up on the inside. And then just gonna roll it around, covering all the other parts of the birdhouse. You can see all that color change. Just like that should do just fine. Hey well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the first informal kind of editing and uh, just kind of a rundown of how I assemble my tornado birdhouses. And if you have any comments, tips, or suggestions you want to offer me, drop them down below. I'd love to hear them. And I guess I will see you on the next informal <laughs> or even my normal edited videos. Talk to you later, guys. Boom!